Robbie Rogers. <laughs> it has Hi. been a while. It has been a long time. So um, I don't know. You. If, I don't know if you remember this. Of course I do. Um, so for our our listeners at Making Gay History, um, you and I know each other. Uh, so yeah. you are Robbie Rogers, uh, <laughs> famous famous out soccer player. Uh, <laughs> We worked together more years ago than I can remember now on oh your book. Gosh. Yeah. But you've had um, uh, a career change. And career that's, change. yeah, that's why I've invited you here today. Right. But we have to go back. I mean, I. Yes, yeah, so no, we're going to we're going to go way back. But, okay, good. So, <laughs> okay. so I invited you here today All because right. uh, you asked me or you invited me to see a screening of a movie I knew nothing about called My Policeman, starring, mm -hmm. it turns out, someone famous who I'd never heard of before. I shouldn't say it. I, I'd heard about him in gossip columns, but I really didn't know who Harry Styles was. Right. And, right. and when I saw the film, I didn't know who Harry Styles was, the actor, until I saw the credits and realized he played the young policeman in the film. Right. So I came to your film not knowing anything about the story, not knowing anything about the stars. And I was so swept away and so loved the film and was so moved by it. Um, and it turns out there's a backstory here in how it came about because right. it's based on a novel. So tell me how you first heard about well, it. This. Yes, it's based on a novel. It's, um, I was given this book actually before I met you. I was living in England. I was still playing for Leeds United. Or maybe I just finished playing with Leeds United, and um, someone gave like a, a publishing house in England. The publisher of the book gave me a copy of it, and uh, it was like it was soon after I think I came out. I think that's what it was, and they gave it to me, and they're like, "Oh, if you ever want to write a book, um, like this is what we do, and blah blah blah." And here, just read this one. This is a new one that we're working on, and and I read it that weekend. I was going to run the half marathon in Brighton. So obviously I have, was retired because I never would do that while I was playing. And I just like fell in love with it. It was- um, Well, tell me briefly was, what, what it's about and what what made you fall in love with it? Um, so it's a story of three people, two men and a woman uh, set in the fifties and the nineties in Brighton, England. Um, and it's, um, you know, Early in the movie or in the book, uh, Marion, who is played by Gina McKee, she brings in a man named Patrick who's just had a stroke. And um, oh, don't don't tell is, us the don't tell us the whole well, story. I was telling you what it's about. No, no, no. Okay, I'm sorry. I, are you no, 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 no don't, don't do that. It's we can leave it at there are two men and a woman, and right. it's a love story. How about if we leave it, it at that? Okay, um, great. And it's, and you know, it's it's slightly based off the life of Ian Forrester, actually. He. Uh, uh, fell in love with the policeman and at the end of his life um the policeman's wife was taking care of them um so I, yeah, yeah i don't want to give away too much no no but... don't so I, I i read that in the production notes i had no idea that it was a novel based on em forrester's story um right. but i you know, I Lightly, love a, like loose yeah yeah but i i love a good love story and um you know the more tragic the better <laughs> So. Right. See, that's, I think, how I am, too. Like, I, you know, you've obviously read Fellow Travelers as well. So yes. I, um, you know, it's funny. I was with, uh, do you know Scott Berg? He's a writer. Yes. He was, he'd seen the film and he knows that I'm working on Fellow Travelers and other things. And he was like, Robbie, I have to, we have to sit down at dinner one night and talk about why you're so drawn to these things. And I'm like, I think it's, I think I'm an, I'm, I think I'm an old soul, but also I think my experience in soccer and football, British, American soccer, British football, um, and being like closeted. And I don't know, there's something that, I don't know what it is, but there's something that connects my experience there and being repressed, but also the desire to like have a love story that um, really when I read stories like My Policeman or Fellow Travelers, or I mean, I can name a number of gay films or just films in general, that I am just like so drawn towards them and want to tell them. And 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 I thought, I hope that you would love it because there's also a historical element to this film. Yeah, I never want to say, yeah, I never want to say something that's important, but um, I do think it is important I, to know this story. I think it's important to know the story. I, I found some of it shocking, um, uh, horrifying, in fact, 
But right. I share with you this, this um, I gravitate toward these kinds of stories. And I think that, I, I, maybe it's a projection. I think that for um, anyone who's grown up closeted, who looks around and sees a world in which people are falling in love, but that's forbidden right. for us. That we are right. told when I was growing up, which was a little before you were growing up, I was told that uh, gay men could never have relationships. In fact, Same. there's a book called Every, uh, Everything You Want to Know About Sex But We're Afraid to Ask. And the little section on homosexuals said that we were uh, doomed to hide in bushes and have furtive sex with people we didn't know. And that right. wasn't the life I wanted. I aspired to the kind of love story that is told in My Policeman a story mm -hmm. that is really about forbidden love and about heartbreak and um, a, a sort of classic triangle where each one of them is looking at the other, but they don't, it doesn't line up. Um, it, and that's really, the other thing I love about my police when I say is, um, yes, it's a LGBT love story, but also it's a story about um, regret and like trying to control love yeah. and, um, Oh always God. there's there's always time to um like free yourself from shame or from uh secrets and so i i found obviously the the story between uh patrick and tom like really powerful but like marion's story to me is also like I, when when she closes her eyes at the end i like i start her hands out the window like i cry every time don't don't i, don't. I, I just little things i, I you know, <laughs> You know what I mean? It's, um, I know, I, I know also, exactly. Very universal. I mean. And I have friends yeah. who've, who've lived this life. I know somebody right. who is in a marriage relationship and has been for decades, um, who came to me years ago, not years ago, uh, 14 years ago, asked me to lunch. Um, and we'd had something of a fling in college uh, mm -hmm. when he had a girlfriend who he ultimately married. And yeah. he was trying to scope out the state of my relationship because he didn't want to leave his marriage, but couldn't stand not being with a man. Right. And, um, and I said, why don't you just come out? And he said, I'm supposed to come out at 50. Um, right. And he had children and up in my life. I said, well, you could be 60 or 70 and come out too, but you could still have a life. <laughs> We've never spoken since. Um, wow. because I wasn't, I've heard similar I, stories, by the way. Um, yeah, so yeah. common. Yes, I think that your 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 film will resonate for a lot of people. So, take fast forward. So you read this novel. Yeah. Um, did you think then it needed to be a movie? Um, I mean, well, I'm not thinking reading about that. those things then. Yeah, I wasn't totally thinking about those things then. I think I remember reading it and being like, "This would be an incredible movie," but you know, I was still not really sure what I was going to do at that moment yeah. in my life. I think I was going to go. You know, you know this. I was like forced my way into London College of Fashion and like yes. save money and like this is what I'm gonna do. I'm in I'm live in London. So um you know it was actually I was reading it for like the third or fourth time. Greg and I were dating and um, that's Greg Greg, like, Greg Greg Berlani. Yeah, 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 he's a he's yeah. a producer. Yeah. He's a producer, writer, director, um a really great one actually. And um he it was funny I remember I was laying out by the pool reading it again and this is again we were only dating for like a year and he like snatched it out of my hand he's like what are you reading <laughs> and i was like it's a beautiful love story blah, blah 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 and he really went into into his room into the room and he like read it over like a day or two and he huh. came to me he's like this would be a great film and i was like yeah it would be a great film it's so beautiful and he's like well we should option it and i was like okay <laughs> so then we did we optioned it and um sent it to ron nice who uh you know he's um, most yeah and ron's so, yeah. most famous for writing um uh philadelphia which was an early yeah. aids movie yeah yes um a movie that i really love and um he read it and was kind of like okay my job now is to kind of is to not mess this up like the book so much of the book works and um so we worked with him for a few years writing the script and he was really busy on homeland and ray donovan but um I remember like reading the script the first time I was like in my car and I pulled over to the side of the road and I like read it so quickly and Greg would like called me like right as I finished and he's like oh it's just so beautiful and a lot of times when you get a first draft you are like oh yeah yeah there's a lot of work to <laughs> right but this wasn't that this was um you know my belief in the book and the story and I'd say Greg's belief and Sarah's belief because Sarah Schechter is his producing partner who did it with us um it was like even um we just felt more encouraged, I would, I would say, and more um, 
do we just saw like, oh, there's just, we need to make this, you know? So um, that's when we started going to directors and different people. And it came to Michael Grandage, who's, uh, you know, really big uh, theater director in England. And, um, and all the pieces kind of like slowly came together, but honestly, it was nine years to get this movie made. Wow. Wow. Nine years. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. Um, really long time. Um, almost as long as I've known you. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You were 12 when you first read this book. <laughs> I mean, so there's a, a book I read when I was very young uh, in uh, 1976 called The Front Runner. It was another tragic gay love story um, mm -hmm. about an Olympic uh, uh, athlete and his coach falling in love. Uh -huh. And it has, it's, it, it was optioned many times, never made into a movie. Now it's so dated, you wouldn't make it into a movie. Um, it was so dated. never know. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I wept. I was 17 years old and, and, right. and you know, you this beautiful love story about an athlete and his coach. And it ends so, so tragically. But this film doesn't, this film has a, has a, such a profound ending I found. And so much of it is told with image. It is such a right. gorgeous film. There isn't a lot of dialogue. No. Um, and did you imagine it in that way? Because there's so many moments I can still picture in my head, these beautiful scenes. Um, one in particular, if I can just, I'm not gonna give this away to the audience. Yeah, of course, I talk as much as you want about it. There's a scene, I'm supposed to be interviewing you, Ronnie. Um, uh, there's a scene cool. where, where um, uh, uh, the policemen, it's now they're, they're adults, they're, it's in the 1990s. Linus Roach, yeah. Yeah, is looking, he's, in profile, it must be golden hour. I don't know where it was just so beautifully shot. He's looking into the room where his beloved, who's now in bad shape, is. And the camera pulls back and you see Marion, his wife, looking at him, looking at his beloved. And right. it's just, it's one of those unforgettable images. So right. when you worked on this film, were you there for the shoot where you saw this happen? Yeah, oh, we, moved to, we moved to England as a family. So Greg, wow. myself, the kids, yeah, we wow. lived in England for, I don't know, six months shooting it and wow. uh, back and forth for the edit. And I'm actually going this weekend for the London premiere. So um, that, yeah, you know, I, that was a lot of, Ron's script is really beautiful and descriptive and uh, the dialogue is great, but I would say Michael's vision, um, like I remember him even saying to me, like before while we were shooting it or even during that he's like you know we could tell this movie without and then he was kind of joking but I, you know I, I definitely thought it was in his mind or I could see it was in his mind is that we could tell this movie without any dialogue like it's it's um or at least he wanted to be able to invoke those kind of feelings with um you know the setting in Brighton and Peacehaven um you know a scene like that even like Linus when he sees uh nigel and his partner in the um yes in, yeah. you know and then he goes and it's like and this is a man and nigel's taking care of patrick and like there's there if you really think about those scenes there's it's not just him seeing two gay men you know touch no, each other no, no. in the market it's there's there's more depth to it so um i i i've i remember the first time seeing uh like revealing tom seeing patrick for the first time in the 90s and after not going to the room at all, and I was like, I was just so moved and the reveal of that. And um, obviously yeah. Rupert's in bad shape at that point. So um, yeah, I didn't, yeah. you know, I think that was mostly the director, I would say that had a oh. kind of a vision to be able to really tell stories without too much um, dialogue. It's one of the remarkable things I find about film. And I am really just mostly a consumer of film while I've worked on a number of documentaries. Um, so I have some experience, but I loved being able to watch this film without dissecting it as I watched it. I was so right. con consumed by it. Mm -hmm. There's a moment early in the movie, and I will not reveal it for those who are going to be watching this before they watch the movie, where it just involves this, it's this early moment and you, and, uh, uh, in the apartment um, with the policeman. And it took my breath away. And it's such a small gesture but it it it's a pivot in the film that um, I almost said in the theater, oh my god, um, right. yeah yeah. So um, I have a couple more questions for you. Let's see. Um, yeah, of course. Um, and and then I feel we'll like wrap. we need like a catch up in general. I know we do. I know we do. Um, <laughs> but but I I try to keep this relatively short for our making gay history. Uh, 
listeners and maybe we'll have an additional which episode. i listened to like I, what I, I know i've written you but i, I listened to all of the the episodes and especially okay. when we go away for like you know holidays and i just when i go on let's say like a winter break i go on a lot of walks and i listen to all of them oh, i'm so are, glad we're just yeah. about to just about to launch a new season in fact okay great um you were an athlete um you thought of working in fashion um you know now make movies um, right how do you like and you work with your husband no less which can be really right. dicey for some people um yes. how has this transition been and do you like what you do now um i do i i i think when i was playing i was striving for i wanted to find something where i could be more creative or like challenge myself um you know, I think I was, it was, it, soccer is very creative, but it's so, it's so much, you know, it's athleticism and it's very physical. And I think, you know, one of the reasons I was starting to shift towards fashion was to test myself, um, find, you know, how creative I was. And if I could do something outside of football where I could just really challenge myself in that way. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I actually was really inspired by Craig Zane and Neil Marin, two producers that came to me. And I think we spoke about this. We did, we talked about, they came to me to do a, a, a comedy uh, called like Men in Shorts. We like sold it to ABC and we never made it. We sold it and we worked on the pilot, but I had so much fun doing it. And uh, that was kind of my um, initiation or my introduction to like, you know, setting up a project. And um, I just really loved it. So then I, yeah, I started developing stuff with Greg. Um, and I would say I, probably I enjoy more working with Greg and Sarah, you know, fellow travelers is not with them. It's, I'm just doing it with Ron and Dan Minahan um, at Showtime. And so it's not with Warner Brothers and their company. And uh, I have to admit, like, I think it's, it's good. Like it's good for me in terms of like a healthy bit of my ego to be able to be like, Oh, I can do this away from Greg and Sarah. Although I love working with them. And there's like so many times I want to like vent and like get their advice. You know, <laughs> of course. Figuring out things on this other project, but um it's uh, yeah, I love working with them. I love working in this industry. It is very creative. You also, as an athlete, I think a lot of guys, men and women, have to learn so quickly. And I think for gay athletes also, is you're learning to survive in the locker room, yeah. um, you know, while you're hiding a secret, and you then also have to perform in the field. You have to learn new positions. You have to, if you don't learn, you know, within a day or a week, you get cut and you lose your position. So um, I think that has followed me into, into this, this career that I'm doing now. And I get to be creative. I get to, you know, fellow travelers. I wrote one of the episodes of my sister. I, you know, it's, it's really, um, there's so many elements of it that I really love and there are elements that are tough, but that's, I guess, any job. <laughs> every, every job. I have people right. say, to, say to me, you're so lucky to do what you do. And I, and I have been known to say, spend a day with me at my desk. You know, I, I get to be creative uh, yesterday. I got to be creative for 30 minutes to write the uh, trailer for our upcoming yeah. season. The rest of the oh, day was, you know, responding to email, uh, fundraising, all the rest that goes into doing course. this. But, you know, we, it is a privilege to do the work you do, to do the work I do. Right. Um, one of the things I love about the work you do is that you bring gay issues, LGBTQ issues to the screen in a way that people... Um, can oh it sounds so, so awful to consume people can consume what you produce um in right. a way that it's it's entertaining it's also educational um but it's entertaining first and the education piece comes along with it i hope so yeah, yeah. um which i think is important you know um one of the best parts about having carrie styles like i think so first i'll say the cast is like predominantly lgbt i think in the 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 top eight or the first eight in the call sheet i think it was like five like identify as like lgbtq uh -huh. um i don't know what harry <laughs> identifies as i actually don't know what a lot of young people these days like identify as but <laughs> yes but having someone like harry in the film who is a huge star um a lot of people will consume this and it's entertaining it's and yeah it's yeah and it's him yeah, just, so a yeah, lot of people yeah. are going to learn about going to learn about this history and that is like it gets me really excited. Yeah. Something like that. And like, I'm not, there's no like gay agenda that I'm trying to like trick, you know, young girls in the Midwest, but there is, um, it will open a lot of people's eyes to history and also 
you know, there are things that we don't want to go back to that I feel like a lot of people would like to send us back to the 50s. So um, yeah, I always say I have I often said when I was first promoting my work back in the 80s, the late 80s and into the 90s, when people would say that you know we shouldn't exist, do you want your daughter marrying a gay guy? Do you want that life for her? Yeah, and true. they can exactly. and this, yeah, uh, um, uh, to to live a life where they sense that they're not loved and that they're not attractive. Yeah. And how many women have lived that experience? And there are a lot of them. Right. Um, right. You know, Harry, St I, I would never have known that. That uh, um, is it, Harry Styles. Harry Styles, yeah, yeah. Yes, honestly, I was like before I started this film. I knew kind of who he was. I like knew that people were fans of his, but I didn't really, I wasn't really introduced to Harry until um, I heard that he loved the script, and uh -huh. I met with him, and then I did a deep dive of like who uh -huh. Harry Styles. Was. Oh, he's so, really, really famous. He's really. <laughs> I don't famous. have to tell you, but but he's right. also. He's also great in the film. You'd never know that he hadn't had a lead role before. He, right? His he, there isn't a false moment in his performance. No, no and he was um, like really determined uh, to rehearse. He knew, you know, the entire script <laughs> the day we met him. Wow. and was really passionate about the project. So, um, you know, I'm really grateful because it's someone like Harry that gets a film like this made the way that it is. Yeah. You know, with this kind of support, with this kind of uh, m like marketing and distribution plan. Um, so, you know, you need stars in movies course, to really um, get to attract people. And um, he's a massive star that um, um, that I think is just, I mean, this is like a, a period gay love story, an important one, but yeah. I don't think any, like it, not any, just anyone takes this on, so. Well, it's a, it's a period love story, period. Because, right. because Marion loves Tom. Um, right. yeah. Tom loves right. what is the other character's name? Patrick. Tom loves Patrick. Patrick loves Tom. They both like yeah. Marion. It's just it's um, it's you know, it's just right. there's a line in the film. I'm not gonna. I'll tell you off camera when we're done recording. Is I don't want to spoil it for the audience, but it is just one of the most profound lines in a movie about people in relationships who love right. each other but then wind up doing, really doing terrible things to each other um, right. emotionally. So um, last question for you is, yeah. when, uh, when is the premiere and uh, uh, in theaters? And then when is the premiere uh, streaming? Where is it streaming? Where can people see it? I know that in New York at, uh, at New Fest, I think it will have premiered by the time we post this. Um, uh, so tell people, where can they see it? Um, yeah, it, it premieres in, so it's in like limited theaters. Um, all around the United States and, and all over around the UK, actually, um, on October 21st. And then it'll be on Amazon Prime on November 4th. So Amazon is like the studio and the distributor, and they've been with us, you know, for a while now. So it's an, an Amazon film. Um, it's just so, great. Yeah. It's just great. Don't go away. I'm going to stop recording. Right. I'm going to thank you. And I'm going to have a little chat with you afterwards. Thank cool. you, Robbie Rogers. Good luck with the film. I hope it's an enormous success. It deserves to be an enormous success and congratulations to you personally for for reinventing yourself and uh, you're not quite midlife but close uh <laughs> but reinventing yourself in a way that seems so gratifying so thanks yeah, thank so much you. thank you so much bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.